Barbarella, love it or hate it, gave us Jane Fonda as a dazzling, hedonistic, interstellar voyager in the 41st century. After flaunting her sex appeal and 60s-inspired groovy aesthetic in Zero Gravity, our eponymous heroine lands on an icy planet in search of finding someone by the name of Durand Durand, a scientist in Sogo, the City of Night, a fabulously flamboyant place where a new sin is invented every hour. There, she discovers the orgasmatron, an organ that doubles as an execution device that can bring about a victim's death by an excess of pleasure. She also finds the Chamber of Dreams in the possession of a powerful lesbian queen and a group of ladies smoking a hookah that can be used to dispense the essence of man, whatever that's supposed to mean. Barbarella's clumsy plot raises many questions and very few answers. The one thing we can be sure of when watching this surrealistically absurd film is the future is apparently very sexy, but also quite deranged. In fact, the forthcoming world is painted as something of a science fiction fan's nymphomaniacal nightmare. Very few people actually consider Barbarella to be a particularly good film. It's slow, unevenly paced, ridiculously cheesy, and full of moments that are sure to make you cringe. That being said, some consider its outlandish, campy aesthetic to be somewhat endearing in the so-bad-it's-good sense. It's enjoyed cult classic status for decades. Director Roger Vadim was actually Fonda's husband at the time, and while the film that the couple collaborated on wasn't exactly Academy Award material, it left behind a legacy. We're willing to bet quite a few people still have sexy pin-up posters of Jane Fonda as Barbarella on their walls to this day. There's no denying that the film made a powerful statement concerning sexual liberation. That detail is pretty self-evident. But we're going to dig a little deeper and see what it was about Barbarella that struck a chord with audiences and how it impacted culture for years to come. Along the way, we'll touch on some little-known facts that even diehard fans might not know. Stay tuned to find out how Barbarella was conceived and which celebrities owe their signature looks to the film. Critics weren't too kind to the film. Dave Kerr of the Chicago Reader had this to say, Quote, the film is ugly on so many levels, from art direction to human values, that it's hard to know where to begin, end quote. Variety magazine echoed those sentiments by saying that despite having a bunch of polish and a few humorous one-liners, Barbarella wasn't even much of a film. It's true the special effects were definitely dazzling. The film's opening scene was undeniably iconic, and most critics agree it starts off with more promise than it's capable of delivering. After Jane Fonda strips out of her spacesuit and arouses the viewer with her playful, sensual little tease, the plot quickly takes a nosedive and the film becomes a torturously tangled mess. Sex appeal and flashy effects aren't enough to save the film from the harsh criticism it deserved. Barbarella, a setback for science fiction. For years, science fiction was considered to be comic book filler. Buck Rogers was stereotyped as being the kind of entertainment only younger audiences would enjoy. No one was really taking sci-fi seriously. How could they? It was all fantastical fluff. But then, Stanley Kubrick brought us 2001 A Space Odyssey in 1968, and Charlton Heston starred in Planet of the Apes that same year. Audiences were beginning to look at science fiction a bit differently. Maybe it could be a serious platform to deliver poignant reflections of humanity and society. Perhaps it wasn't just a genre for daydreaming adolescents. But then came Barbarella. The special effects may have looked flashy, but they lacked imagination and artistic vision. Fonda's sex appeal was exploited for the sake of exciting the younger pubescent audience. Substance and story were substituted for cheap thrills and lost meandering in a hyper-sexualized, glittery environment that made no attempt to deliver any redeeming contributions of social or artistic value. It was a mess, and in many ways it was a slap in the face to those who tried so hard to bring science fiction into the mainstream. Even Jane Fonda knew it had missed the mark. In her memoir, she noted it could have been a strong feminist move for her, but it fell short in nearly every way. 80s pop band Duran Duran borrowed their name from the film. Barbarella is tasked with finding Dr. Duran Duran and bringing him back to Earth, but the doctor has plans of his own. He's the villainous operator of the excessive pleasure machine, an execution device that he places our voluptuous protagonist into with the intent of killing her with sexual pleasure. She overheats the machine, essentially out-sexing it, and emerges refreshed and enlivened. Durand has no interest in coming back to Earth with Barbarella. He's too preoccupied with seizing control of Sogo from the Black Queen, played by Anita Pallenberg. 
Alice Cooper's look is inspired by the film as well. The aesthetic look of Vincent Fernier, aka Alice Cooper, was inspired by Barbarella. But it wasn't the titular character's appearance that captured the band's imagination, but that of the Black Queen that caught their eye. Anita Pallenberg wore long black leather gloves with switchblades that extended from them. Alice knew he had to adopt that bit into his wardrobe. In addition to borrowing from Barbarella, Alice Cooper also cites Emma Peel from The Avengers and Betty Davis from the 1962 horror film Whatever Happened to Baby Jane as inspiration for his signature look. Based on a comic book character Barbarella was based on a comic book series that was created by French artist Jean-Claude Forest. It was first serialized in the French men's magazine V in 1962. The comic attempted to capture the sexual revolution that was happening at the time through the lens of a sci-fi superhero. The comic strip was collected into a standalone book in 1964 and subsequently created a bit of controversy by conservative critics who deemed the book's erotic material offensive. Jean-Claude Forrest passed away in 1998. Hey, quick side note, if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And keep watching to find out what other sultry films Jane Fonda got naked for. Forrest had Bridget Bardot in mind. When designing his comic book's Sex Kitten Heroine, Jean-Claude Forrest drew upon French actress and sex symbol Bridget Bardot for inspiration. She was such a universal symbol of sex appeal in her day, it would have been difficult for a French artist at the time to conjure up a hedonistic, pleasure-seeking, sensual character without incorporating some elements of Bardot. When director Roger Vadim and producer Dino De Laurentiis was casting for Barbarella, they initially didn't have Vadim's wife in mind. Their first pick was actually Bardot. Some other names on their list included Vima Lisi and Sophia Loren. Raquel Welch was offered the role, but she decided to pass. She went on to star in Myra Breckenridge, another sexploitation film that's known for being just as bad as Barbarella. Jane Fonda dubbed herself When films are dubbed for international audiences, typically another actor is brought into the studio to record dialogue for other regions. Jane Fonda is actually fluent in French, so for the French release, she dubbed her own voice. There was almost a sequel. Even though the film did poorly at the box office and was met with rather dismal reviews, there were like. talks to make a sequel or reboot film for years. The first proposed sequel was planned late in 1968. Robert Evans suggested the second film would be called Barbarella Goes Down and would have the title character diving into some kind of undersea adventure. Jane Fonda's daughter was even suggested as the star. Even though that project never got off the ground, Vadim spent a great bit of his life trying to get a sequel made. But he died in 2000 without seeing his dream come true. Sin City director Robert Rodriguez also discussed remaking the film in the early 2000s. But when the budget exceeded $80 million, Universal Studios withdrew from talks. In 2012, rumors began circulating that a TV series based on the film was in the works. But by 2016, the project had been abandoned. The epitome of Jane Fonda's sex kitten phase Fonda is a woman of many different faces. Throughout her career, she's had so many different looks and phases. In 1968, she was going through her sex kitten phase. She had starred in a number of risque films that helped her earn that reputation. One of those films was La Ronde, which was also directed by Vadim. In the film, she appeared in a nude scene, and that image was used in posters and promotional material. The image was even slapped across the side of a large building in Times Square. Jane Fonda also did a nude scene in the film The Game Is Over also directed by Vadim, and leaked photos from the film's production were published in Playboy. Buck Henry missed out on all the orgies. Jane Fonda and her husband Roger Vadim rented a villa right outside of Rome while filming the movie. They would often have over guests in the evenings where, rumor has it, Fonda and Vadim, along with celebrities like Gore Vidal, Joan Baez, and others, would engage in wild, drug-fueled orgies. Buck Henry, who was writing the screenplay for Catch-22 at the time, told Vanity Fair he stopped by to see what the hype was about, but when he got there, he couldn't keep his eyes off Jane. To him, she was unobtainable. She was beautiful and sexy, but he wasn't invited to engage in any festivities. So whether the rumors are true or not, we might not ever know. But one thing is for sure, Jane Fonda was destined to be a movie star. Barbarella certainly is a polarizing film. It's received its fair share of scathing reviews, but to this day, something about it continues to lure in curious viewers. 
Are you a fan of Barbarella? Or do you think it's a giant pile of sequin studded glistening intergalactic garbage? Let us know what you think in the comments section. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications so you can keep up with all our latest facts-packed content.